Today I'm starting off with Black Ridge Brewery's Milk Stout. They describe it as black, roasted, and creamy. This is from Black Ridge Brewery in Swift Current, Saskatchewan. Mm, very roasty malt. I like that. So today I'm going to take a look at this little industrial camera here that was sent in a month or two back uh, by Mark from uh, Michigan. He tells me that this came out of an automotive factory. Um, and this, as far as I can tell, is just is a very industrial camera. Just a camera. It doesn't have much other magic to it. And when I lift the lid on it, I can see that this is a is it model TXG06C-P17. It has a Mac address, so I'm assuming it's an Ethernet camera. And it is made by Baumer. It's got a little made in Japan lens here. I don't see a manufacturer name on that lens though. But it is, is that a C mount, I think it's called? Just a small screw on mount, which is quite common in industrial cameras, security cameras. And I think one of the new Raspberry Pi cameras also can take a C mount lens, which may prove to be interesting. So you got the aperture between 1.4 and 16 or C, which I guess is wide open. Um, focus from way over there to infinite. Not much else to see about that lens. Just a nice little manual lens. I can see some hex screws down in those holes there. So that'll be how we get into it. On the back side, we have four threaded mounting holes. We have an eight pin industrial kind of connector there. And a dust cap, which has another four pin connector under it. Not quite sure what those two bumps are. are the LEDs maybe? I don't know. Okay, so let's see what uh, information we can find on this thing before we dig into it and tear it apart. So Baumer seems to be a company who does industrial sensors of various different sorts, including industrial cameras. And if we scroll down through their product page a little bit, we find these cameras with uh, very high IP ratings for harsh environments. This is one that they're currently selling. I'm assuming that the one that I've got is out of date and obsolete, so it probably doesn't meet these specs here. But with enough searching around on the internet, I was able to find a manual for the exact model number, TX6C-17, which is a color camera with a half inch sensor, uh, 776 by 578 resolution, which is half megapixel. But it's got a very high frame rate, 64 frames per second, which I assume is because it's uh, taking pictures of things flying by on an assembly line. So there's the backside of the camera um, from the manual. And it looks like there's several different versions. Um, you can get ones with an RJ45 connector, which is the less weatherproof one, or there's this guy, which is that 8-pin round connector. And, oh, and yeah, those are LEDs. Okay. So the four pin connector that had the dust cap on it, which would indicate to me that it wasn't in use in its previous life, appears to have a trigger input and a flash output control. So here is the two possible interfaces, uh, depending on whether it's on the weatherproof camera like mine is, well, the IP67, or the uh, less harsh environment one. So this is a gigabit ethernet interface. It's power over ethernet which might cause me a little bit of difficulty because I don't really have anything that's power over ethernet compatible in the building at the moment. And the rest of the manual seems to be different ways of controlling it and data sheets and stuff like that, but I'm less concerned about that right now. So for now, I think that's all the intelligence we can uh, gather about this thing from the internet. So let's pull it apart and see what's on, on the inside. I assume, yeah, these are, kind of loctited in there, um, not the 
impossible to remove one, but just enough so that it's vibration proof because, you know, industrial. Well, that was easy. Oh, neat. And there's just this connector here, which mates into that connector in the back and it's fairly low force as well. What's the date code on that sticker say 0813? Okay, so there is our date, 2013, I guess. This is an interesting little assembly here. We have four boards stacked up. Each one has pin headers or headers of various types connecting the boards to each other. So I guess we'll just go through these boards one at a time. This one on the top here has a bunch of capacitors on it. Uh, some MELF packages. Normally those are diodes, but these ones have stripes indicating that they might be either resistors or inductors, maybe? That one's presumably a diode. Lots of capacitors. Another inductor there. Okay, so that's got to do with power supply, and it's double-sided board. So, I guess we'll pull him off and see what's on the back of him. Kind of convenient that the standoff nuts they used are the same size as the shaft on these miniature screwdriver bits. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's interesting. So between the top board and the lower boards, it looks like there's only six pins that actually connect through this little connector here. The rest of them just pass through untouched and pass through to the, uh, to that connector back there. That is pretty neat. So what's on the back of this board then? We have another big MELF package and a smaller one. Those with the single stripe look kind of like diodes. More capacitors, more capacitors. Obviously power supply edge going on. What is that chip there? It is an LM5072. Given everything else on that board, I'm going to assume that's some sort of a power supply chip. Yep, that's exactly what it is. It is a power over ethernet uh, and PWM control. 100 volt maximum input. Uh, and current limit up to 800 milliamps. So the next board down in the stack looks like it is actually connected to all of the pins on this header. It has this big chonky chip on it, what appears to be a crystal, um, and then just some passives and stuff, and a couple of four pin devices. And then it looks like it's kind of busy on the back side too. Right, let's pop that guy off which is a fairly low force. Oh, wow. There's a good size chip on the back of there too. And then a bunch of smaller support components. So what are you, Mr. Pulse Chip? H6062NL. Oh, it's not a chip at all. Well, sort of is, I guess, but it is a transfer a gigabit ethernet PoE transformer. So that isolates the uh, data from the power. Okay. Sure, it's just a set of transformers. Okay. I guess I should have expected that, but I, I figured that might be right on that uh, back plane rather than, rather than on the second board down. Oh, well, shows you what I know. And then on the back side here, not familiar with that logo. That BBE-111-CAA-1? Uh, 0942. Okay, so that's a little bit older, 2009 chip. And here's that uh, dense little guy on the other side of the board. It is a gigabit ethernet transceiver it's for 10 slash 100 slash 1000. Okay, I guess that makes sense being on the opposite side of the same board with the transformer. So that means this board is all sort of layer one ethernet stuff. Further down the pile. Oh, there we go. Got a, I think, Spartan chip. That looks like some brain power. And what's with it? Oh, let's, let's pop that board out and find out what's going on. Oh, and there aren't nuts holding this one down. It's just clamped in by the previous board and has these little spacers in here. Okay, 
that hold it into its little connector. So again, just a couple of large chips, a little tiny guy, and a handful of capacitors, and some little tiny passives down there. The solder blobs are bigger than those guys are. And on the back side, again, some of those little tiny, those 0402, I'm not sure. So tiny. A um, bunch of capacitors bypassing all over the place. And then, oh, so ST chip here, and what are these guys? Can't barely see it. So six pin package. Anyway, whatever. Let's, uh, let's see if we can find what these guys are. Yeah, Xilinx Spartan. There's some part numbers. I'll go look those guys up. And there's this little guy over here too, whatever he's doing. I'll go look up those part numbers as well. That's the thing with stuff like this. There's, uh, there's not a lot of discrete circuitry. It's all done in dedicated packages like those. So that big Xilinx chip is an FPGA. All right. I guess that makes a certain amount of sense that FPGAs are often faster than than uh, microcontrollers just because they can progr be programmed to be a very dedicated uh, function. So this particular one is the XC3S1200, which will fall, well, I guess, 1.2 million gates. It doesn't show up on this data sheet, but that's probably what's going on there. And just looking at the one I've got, again, the date code looks like it's about a 2009, which would explain why it's not showing up in this 2013 data sheet, I'm guessing. And that little 8-pin ST uh, chip on the back looks like it's a little uh, flash memory. Well, 16 meg flash memory. Okay. Further down the stack we go. Pull off these little spacers. That's just plugged into the camera sensor with another little header type arrangement. Just gotta gently pry that guy up. Spudger seems to work better than my, oh. Oh, there's a ground pin there soldered down to the heat sinks. Okay. So there's just these two chips up here on the top that are doing interesting things. Again, another one that I don't recognize. I'm spending a lot of time digging through data sheets tonight. And this guy that's too small for the sticker that's hiding him. Hopefully I can read it once I get that sticker off there. Hmm. Let me get some alcohol and clean that off. D3400N. Again, to the data sheets. No idea on that first one. I don't see anything that looks like it could reasonably be that. It's certainly not welding cable <laughs> or a serial cable. Um, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose when you're looking for data sheets. And also no luck with that guy that was hiding underneath the sticker. Um, I'm assuming because it's got the, the sticker on it from, uh, from Baumer that this is something programmable. So it's unlikely to be any of these kinds of things that I'm finding. Probably not MOSFETs or resistors so it goes let's dig deeper i'm not sure if this is a good idea or not but i'm gonna desolder this ground pin here that's getting in the way and we'll see if we can pull this board off i think that did it yes yes it did what have we got on the back here? Almost entirely passives, except for one little tiny chip. Maybe we'll have better luck figuring what this guy is. LBGC9634. No idea. My luck seems to have run out trying to find, uh, trying to find these guys. This is probably not a DC to DC converter. Oh, I suppose maybe it is all surrounded by capacitors, but no, definitely not that. Well, looks like the deeper we dive into this thing, the harder it is to find the part numbers. Regardless, it is a very cool little uh, mechanical design and stack up of boards in there. You have to agree with me on that, I think. 
So this will be the image sensor in here. It looks like it's kind of welded in there, but we can sort of get an, a look at the face of it there. There is the image sensor in there, and judging by all its traces, that's just going out to these pins to be dealt with on the stack of boards. What can I do with this lens? That's kind of nifty. Iris down on the lens. You can close it right down to nothing. And the focus ring. I can keep this still while I'm doing this. Yeah. I'm going to adjust the focus a little bit too. Mm -mm. Well, that's fun to play with. What happens if I go the other way? Oh, that's kind of neat. I might have a use for that if I get a Pi Cam to go with that uh, Pi Zero that I got the other day in my mailbag. Well, now then, what haven't we looked at? Oh, yeah, right. The back of this guy, that board back there. Doesn't look like there's much going on. Some diodes and capacitors and stuff, but... We'll see what happens when we, I think disconnecting these uh, connectors is a, probably a good place to start with that. Ah, there we go. The plungers players win again. Yeah, that board is held in by more than just that. But I do have to get these off if I want to pull it out. Looks like there are... One, two, three, four little tiny hex screws holding this guy together. Ah, uh, well, that's disappointing. It seems to be somewhere between those two sizes of hex, which is a size that I don't have in my various assortments. That's extremely disappointing. That means I can't see what's on the back of that board. On one hand, I was kind of hoping that I could actually power this thing up and play with it, but without uh, power over Ethernet uh, to power it and connect to it, and without the funky custom industrial software that this thing needs to talk to it, I don't think I could get it to do anything, even though I do know the pinout of that. Still, it is a very interesting device, just from a mechanical assembly point of view. The way they stacked all those boards in there on that header. I wonder if I can get them all back in. I'm sure I can. Uh, what orientation was this? Oh yeah, it'll line up with that ground pin. Okay, well I think that's my next step. I'll just put it back together just so I don't lose all the parts. Just in case I do happen to come up with uh, a power over ethernet router or a power over ethernet inserter at some point in the future. Um, maybe I can revisit this thing at the very least, see if I can ping it or something, right? Uh, but at this time, I think that's all I'm going to do with this, except for put it back together. Um, though that lens may come in handy for other applications in the future. To be determined. I probably should have mentioned this earlier, but this thing is IP67 rated, which you can see the gaskets and stuff there, um, which means that it's good... It's uh, protected against dust ingress for eight hours under vacuum, <laughs> which is an interesting test. And it's also good under a meter of water, like submerged in a meter of water for 30 minutes is what the test, that test is. So this is pretty well weatherproofed. And I guess there's probably, yeah, there's gaskets behind there. Uh, this is clamped up against. You can't really see them underneath there, but... I have to assume that they're in there. Anyway, thanks to Mark for sending this. That was uh, that was really interesting to see, especially the mechanical assembly of it. Um, and thanks to all of you for watching. Um, comments and questions down below. I know you're going to have something to say about this. And I'm I too am disappointed that I am not set up right now to power it up and play with it. I mean, what do I want with a half megapixel camera? But still, it'll be fun to play with. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.